there. Uh, welcome along to another quick video that I'm doing just while I'm waiting for the next Star Trek Online ship to appear. Um, I did mention in one of the comments that I was planning on doing this. So this is a quick look at the Deep Space Station K7. Um, this one that I recently got, um, the Eagle Moss did a, a quick, um, I think it was 50% off. Buy two, get third. 50% off or get third free or something so I'm going to pick this one up um, yeah so let's just uh, do the quick unbox in the box. It's um, an interesting one, this one. Apologies for the loud bang. Um, I mean, I, I was a fan of the um, the Tribbles episode to begin with. And I think I really started to like it when the um, Deep Space Nine crossover episode came out. So... Yeah, this was one that I quite liked. Apart from the um, Earth Dock Space Station, which I'm still waiting for, probably like hundreds of you. Uh, there's the little ticker there. I'll open that in a bit. And there it is. Let me just... Uh, So there it is, K7. It's a really elegant design space station, I think. It's, it's definitely very, 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 very 60s space with its uh, spoken wheel design and very old school aesthetic. It's nice though. Um, internal detailing, so from the base, this whole bulb here is, it feels like a solid cast piece of metal, because this is where all the weight is, Every, everything from, you can see this uh, small ring on the inside here, everything from that joint up is entirely plastic. And it is very nice. Lots of panelling. This is the main bay. As you can see, there's, there's nothing inside it. There's no light detailing. There's a few blemishes on the paintwork there as well, which is, which is a shame. Scuff. That looks deliberate. So does that. Pure little grey lines. But that is definitely, you can see there is definitely something there, like a great pan which has just been filled in with paint. It's unfortunate. See inside the uh, bay there. A little bit of detail at the bottom of the inside. So the two little doors there at the back. That's quite nice. And then into the central ring. Um, 
nice bit of dorsal detail on that. Let's just hold the whole thing upside down. A couple of interesting paint apps on the central hub. That's, that's not bad actually, I quite like that. looks it and I think because it probably is I think the hub is slightly misaligned yeah it is just ever so slightly yeah only by maybe a mil but it just looks a little bit wonky Let's just turn it right side up again and you can see the big bulbous unit on the rear. Bit of paint up detail. Bit of a break in the seam that looks a little bit untidy. Oops. And as you can see there's a hell of a lot of artifacts there on the uh, on the paint there on the edge. It's definitely painted in two sections and then mated together clamshell style. But the panel lines are good. Oops. Okay, windows. All molded and 99% misaligned. They all look like they've got these crazy Venetian shutters on them or something. That is... Yep. That is pain. Some of them are just missed entirely. Um, let's get something fine. So can see this one here completely missed the paint and every other one around it it's misaligned these ones seem to start okay but it looks like the the application goes from level and just skews up and off which is a shame but at least the uh, dodgy 60s style aerial is still intact. Nice clear bit of colour on that. Absolutely bonkers. Love it. It's weird, but love it. Um, and then the external hubs. See. A and B. Now it's kind of an odd one because you'll notice the navigational lights, positioning lights here and here correspond port and starboard. However, And you've got that big green splodge on top of C. Just about get it in frame. You can see how big it is. Just bring in my dodgy stick of truth. Yeah. It's way over seven inches in diameter. So this is just six. Well, six and a half if you count all the extra brass that's part of it. Yeah. So it's way over seven inches across. It looks 
quite nice. And like I say, with all the weight on the uh, the underside, it's it's not top heavy at all. And I'm just going to open up this uh, base bag. Centrally mounted with one of these, um, same as Deep Space Nine, or the XL DS9. So, yeah. Don't know how I'm going to mount this because the, any of you that have got the DS9 as well, even the small one, you'll understand. Mounting it is a bit of a pain because they just take up so much space. So having them on a shelf next to some other ships. And there's the F. It looks it's okay, but it's it's definitely going to have to be one that goes to the back, and then others go in front of it. I mean, depending on how much space you've got. But it's nice, it's very nice. Um, one of the things that I was thinking about doing, and this is um, maybe a little bit down the line, but, well, maybe a couple of, depends how bored I get. <clears throat> but uh, all the pictures that I've seen of this cargo bay show it with some uh, little ships inside it. So what I was considering doing was perhaps using some, uh, I don't know whether anybody's ever seen these before or used these before. If, if, if you're a hardcore modeler, you probably will have done. This is um, Photo Etch. It's uh, press cut or laser cut brass. Oh, sorry, that's going weird with the light. Doesn't like that at all, does it? Right, so these pieces of photo etch, and you can see the types of little pieces. Sorry about the flickering. You can see the types of little pieces that come with it. That's okay. Actually, let's just do this. How's that? So you can see these small little pieces. I mean, for example, uh, these pieces here. They could possibly be cut out and folded to make a small little shuttle or something, or a, I don't know, something like a Danube class shuttle or something. Oops, yeah, I go away. Oh, flickering. Yeah. So you can see those types of pieces. I mean, they could make a nice little shuttle with a couple of those. That's just more like grill cut pieces. This one's got a few more options on it. Some of these could make a nice tiny little shuttle or something. Hinges, bits and pieces like that. Anyway, that's uh, that's a plan that I have for maybe giving just a little bit of something extra to this K7 cargo shuttle bay. Anyway, yeah, so there's just a quick look at the um, K7 space station. Um, I think most people will probably end up remembering it from the uh, Trouble with Tribbles episode. Uh, but, uh, yeah. That's quite nice. It, it's it's kind of lacking in detail. It's 
the, the paint apps for these windows, it's a little bit troubling that it's still so many years have gone through and they can't seem to get that particular piece right. Hmm. But anyway, um, yeah, it's just a quick little video um, just to show you around this one. The latest large edition that I've got. Definitely need to have a little look at that. Fix that. Pitting, spotting, it looks like air bubbles. I don't think it is air bubbles. But anyway, there's, there's a couple of little bits and pieces that I'll have to come and look at. And uh, yeah, for a special edition, I think it's a really nice one. I think the um, the addition of this to the set is is very nice, and it'll certainly go along with all the um, ships and models that go with the original series set and or the original series run, and maybe even for the um, for the Deep Space Nine buffs as well. So, yep, that's the K7. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Um, I'm going to do another quick video, which will be about the um, the F. So you'll see that in a future video coming shortly. Um, and yeah, the wait continues for the release of the Pathfinder for the online series. So as soon as I get that, I'll get back to the uh, regular Star Trek online stuff. So. Again, thanks very much for watching. Uh, thanks very much for everybody that comments. Um, the questions are great. Quite like those. Um, and look forward to doing the next video for you. Thanks very much. Cheers. Bye bye.